right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, one quick announcement. Uh, we have a couple of quasi-judicial hearings on our agenda tonight. And uh, one of them, which refers to the Metrolina Greenhouse, has been asked to be continued to December 6th. So those that have signed up to speak will not be able to speak about that in particular. Uh, so I just want to give you a heads up so you're not hanging out. Um, so we'll call our meeting to order. And uh, please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Please stand for the pledge. All right, once again, I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, you can see we're a couple of commissioners short tonight, so uh, I'll take up their time. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, but I do have uh, quite a few comments. Uh, one, the Historic Landmarks Commission uh, last week, last Monday, uh, voted unanimously to move the Delwood Center forward uh, for Historic Landmark designation. So we're very excited about that. Uh, two, uh, Veterans Day. Uh, I hope you all uh, could attend our Veterans Day parade as well as ceremony. I think it was the best one ever. Had a lot of uh, participants. I think there were at least 40 or 42 groups, uh, as well as a 100-year-old veteran. Uh, so I think that definitely set the standard for the oldest veteran ever attending one of our Veterans Day ceremonies. Um, so thank you to staff, and thank you to all those that attended. I think Hopewell came out with the best uh, band, uh, best ROTC, there were a couple of uh, uh, dance groups, and um, the most patriotic was the 100-year-old veteran. So. It's hard, that would be hard to beat. Uh, also, uh, about a week and a half ago, I had the honor of sitting as an interviewee for 19 prospective uh, congressional uh, nominees to the service academies. I want to thank Congresswoman Alma Adams for allowing me to sit in. Uh, you should know it was very difficult uh, to try to separate uh, the best from the best or the better, um, but it was quite an honor and you should be uh, feeling pretty good that there are 19 uh, students in this area that are uh, willing to serve uh, our community in the military. Uh, also, the uh, Metropolitan Transit Commission is meeting on Wednesday at 5 o'clock. This will be my last meeting. I'm sure they're probably happy about that. Um, but we will have a discussion on the interlocal agreements between uh, Mecklenburg County or, or CATS and uh, three communities outside of our uh, area. Um, and it should be actually a pretty quick meeting. And then finally, I want to talk about uh, Hopewell High School. Uh, obviously, they've been in the news lately. Uh, I'd rather always talk about the positives, such as their terrific band and, and kids getting uh, merit scholarships, national merit scholarships. Uh, <coughs> Commissioner Bales, or uh, Mayor-elect Bales, and I met with the uh, principal and superintendent to discuss ways that the community can engage with the school to help them uh, at this time and in the future. Uh, one way that uh, people can get involved is uh, on uh, the 17th, which is Wednesday, they're having a town hall meeting at Lake Forest Church at 7 o'clock. If you can't attend and you would be willing to engage uh, students as either mentors or tutors or just be involved uh, as, as you should, uh, you can email hopewellhigh at cms.k12.nc.us and uh, offer to volunteer. I think there are a lot of good things happening at that school as well as our others. Unfortunately, those don't catch the headlines. Uh, like some of the other things. And then the most interesting uh, comment that I heard is a lot of their uh, issues are coming from ninth and 10th graders. And if you think about it, those are the students that most of seventh and eighth grade, they were remote. So I think they're having a hard time adjusting to the nuances of uh, high school in uh, today's society. It's not an excuse, but uh, it's something that uh, we should all be aware of. So COVID has uh, continuing 
uh, effects on all of us, especially our uh, children. All right. So having said that, Commissioner Bales. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the town hall with CMS has already been discussed. That's Wednesday evening at Lake Forest Church. I would highly encourage um, families in the Hopewell learning community to come out and participate. And for those that are here that are interested in um, having an opportunity to make a difference in the lives of students, I would also encourage you, as the mayor said, to reach out to Hopewell. There's plenty of opportunities to make a difference in the life of a young individual. Um, in regards to education, I've got a couple of things here. Uh, we held our fifth annual speed networking event today for all three area high schools. And we had more than 120 high school students participate from all three, uh, North, Huff, and Hopewell. And I have to say um, a huge thank you to the professionals that chose to sign up and volunteer an, an hour of their time this afternoon to reach out and make a difference in the lives of these students. Um, also to the Lake Norman Chamber and the Lake Norman EDC for hosting and obviously the uh, Lake Norman Education Collaborative as well. Um, by working together, we've done this for five years and we'll continue to do it uh, because it makes a difference. Um, when students have the opportunity to see what is available to them in the next chapter of their life, whether it's in healthcare, public safety, advanced manufacturing, real estate, business, etc., students need to be able to see themselves in those positions and have the opportunity to talk to people that um, have those have made those career choices and. Um, and that is a way to mentor. Um, in addition to that, I'm, you may hear later tonight as well about the Lake Norman Chambers Education Luncheon. Uh, we will be handing out um, Educator of the Year awards for traditional public school, public charter, as well as private schools in our area. Um, and then in addition to that, we will also give an award called the Inspire Our Future Award, which will be going to an area business that has engaged with um, our educators and making a difference in their lives. And then last, well not last but not least, I got two more things. Don't forget the tree lighting at Burkdale on Saturday. The tree lighting in Burkdale starts at 6 p.m. There's a small parade ahead of that at 5.30, so come out and enjoy the festivities. And last but not least, I just want to thank Huntersville Parks and Rec and the American Legion for hosting an outstanding Veterans Day parade and ceremony. Um, truly, it was wonderful to see the community come out and honor all of our veterans. Mr. Mayor, that's all I have. All right, thank you. Mr. Boone. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, from the Lake Norman Chamber of Commerce, on, uh, as Commissioner Bales said, uh, on November 18th at 1145 at the North Stone Country Club, the outstanding educators for our three local schools of the Charlotte Mecklenburg School System, charter school, and private uh, educators will pre be presented. Uh, for additional details, please contact the chamber. Uh, on November 19th, <coughs> it's a Friday, 8.30, Focus Friday, there will be a virtual meeting with North Carolina Senator Phil Berger. Uh, from the Huntersville uh, Fire Department, the fire department uh, has a proud to the tradition of serving Huntersville community since 1923. The Huntersville Fire Department is announcing their uh, 2021 fund drive. Your tax deductible de uh, donation will help the fire department operate, train, and purchase equipment for their members. And this is what it looks like. If you got it in uh, the mail in the last couple days, this is the real deal here. There's a part on the bottom that you would send off to, uh, to the fire department. If you can help them out, I'd appreciate it. Uh, finally, uh, we had a campaign sign pick up by Troop 19. They collected all the campaign signs right after the election. I think they did a great job cleaning the town up. Uh, Troop 19 uh, uh, earned just north of $1,000, and there would be more than interesting. They would be more than interested to do it in two years from now. So, Mr. Mayor, that is my report. Thank you. Commissioner Phillips. Good evening. Good evening. I have an update from Ada Jenkins. 
All of these statistics reflect services provided July 1st through October 31st. Financial assistance helped 39 households with rent, mortgage, utilities, or child care payments totaling $46,989.24. Loaves and Fishes Food Pantry, 265 people benefited from a week's worth of groceries. Street Outreach, which means a homeless community in Lake Norman, 62 individuals supported. Learn Works Academic Enrichment Program, 45 youth enrolled and attending. And that's all I have right now, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Wall. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The uh, Huntersville Regional Chamber will host their monthly member meeting at North Point Bank in Burkdale Village. That meeting is tomorrow from 4.30 to 6.30. Um, the Greenway Trails and Bikeway Commission has their monthly meeting tomorrow evening starting at 6 p.m. That meeting will be at the Town Center Building. Following night on Wednesday, the Parks and Recreation Commission will host their monthly meeting, um, and that meeting is also at the Town Center uh, and starts at 6.30. And finally, we had the uh, ribbon cutting for our new trailhead in our downtown, uh, I guess it was about a week and a half ago, and it's really a, a, was really well done, nice amenity for our downtown. It sits in the uh, adjacent to where our new brewery is going to be. I think we're going to hear a little bit about that and eventually you'll be able to start there and walk east and west uh, in Huntersville under I-77, and, and that's probably about 18 months out. So uh, it, was a, it was a really a, a, a nice uh, setup there. And that's it. Okay. All right. Any questions of staff at this time? Well, speaking about the brewery, uh, are the Ramseys here, Wagner and Trey? So uh, as you may or may not know, the, the town closed on the sale of the Blythe Building, which is uh, the old police station, uh, I guess about a week and a half ago. And I uh, thought it would be good uh, to hear uh, to the new owners and uh, welcome and uh, to talk about their plans and, you know, in the context of all the redevelopment that's going on in downtown. And you're welcome to take your mask off. Please. Yep, yeah. And uh, good to be here and thank you for having us. So as, as uh, the mayor said, we just closed um, on, uh, what, October 3rd? 30th, I believe, or 29th. 29th. Um, and we're working hard with both the team of architects and engineers on, you know, on the details of that. We're actually planning on, in the next week, um, hopefully providing that first detailed submittal to the planning board for the town, the planning department, to take a look at the site layout and all those particular details. Um, and then between that, we also have a process of going to Mecklenburg County to get the, uh, the actual building permits. So we're working on both of those items with Redline, our architect, Fairwood Construction, our general contractor. Um, our goal would be to have those permits in hand um, sometime in January. And if that's the case, then we can start the project from a construction perspective and give six, seven months. Our goal would be to be open for business by Labor Day of next year. That's exciting. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, but we're, we're looking forward to it, too. We're, it's, we're it's a lot of work until we can actually open and, and, and enjoy it. With yeah. everybody else, we're we're very excited about it, and uh, I I want to thank uh, you, the mayor, the board, Anthony, um, for your patience. I know we went through a lot of red tape with uh, the SBA to to get to where we are here, but we're here. And we're very much excited about moving forward and breaking ground in the in the coming months. Uh, quick question: Talk about why you uh, thought this was something you wanted to do in downtown Huntersville. Yeah. Well, so you know a little bit of history on us is. Um, I grew up here, and by grew up meaning I went to, you know, went to, grew up basically in Charlotte, North Carolina, beginning in elementary school, but really up in the North Mech area um, in high school. So I was a graduate of North Mech High back before there was a Hopewell or a Huff High. <laughs> and so class of 2002 at North Mech, um, went to Chapel Hill. So I left um, after Chapel Hill, went to New York City, other places. My parents also left. Um, back in 2004 due to work and relocated multiple cities. They came back to retire because this is the place they enjoyed the most living. I was able to find a way to come back myself um, in 2016 with my wife who I met while working out in San Francisco. So we've been here back now five years. And really one of our goals was to you know, come back to the place that we enjoyed living so much and found a way to come back to and actually open up a family business and be able to even more so become a part of the community. So. We looked for probably two years in the Cornelius Davidson Huntersville area to make that a reality, and luckily we're uh, you know able to 
um, come across this opportunity, work with you all, and, and that's really what, what went into, you know, what we're hoping to break ground on now, in, or, I'm sorry, open in less than a year from now. And, and give us the name and why the name. Yeah, so <laughs> seven, 760 Craft Works, um, and it's really w w two things. One, it's a, it's a subtle nod to the area. 760 is the full pond elevation of Lake Norman. Um, two is, you know, it's Craft Works because while, while there will be, you know, brewing on site to make the beer that's available, um, we will also have um, other craft beverages. So we'll be partnering with small production boutique wineries from around the country as well as internationally. Um, you know, coming from California, it's something that I became fond of, and my wife, born and raised in San Francisco, is a very fond wine connoisseur. Um, she actually, in previous portions of her career, worked in boutique wine sales, so working with uh, distributors who focus on those very small, you know, production wineries that literally you're talking about a family with, you know, 40 acres, um, growing their grapes, making their wine. So, you know, there will be other things too, cider. Um, we'll look to have food trucks um, on site, so part of the property will allow for 50 amp, electrical hookup so we can have food trucks without the noise of generators um, but really just celebrating local handmade whether it's local here or similar communities um, you know small small family type businesses who produce handcrafted products that can be enjoyed in, in, in sort of that sense of community at, at, at our location with everyone here yeah and the only thing I'll add is you know I, I, our plan for the second phase uh, probably after a year year and a half is to actually uh, build our own kitchen on the west side of the property, uh, uh, on the west side of what is now, we have designated as the uh, outdoor patio area. And uh, I, I think, you know, getting back to your question about what, why are we excited about this location, um, it, it, it's the Greenway and the fact that we've got a Greenway right behind the brewery. Uh, we're so excited about that. We're so hopeful that in the years coming, that Greenway is going to join the other ones up through Cornelia. Cornelius and Davidson, and I just think it's going to be, it, it will be a good asset for us to have that right next to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're hoping to be a part of, obviously, of, of bringing more people to downtown, have a reason to come hang out on a Saturday afternoon. Well, good. Well, thank you. Any, other, any questions? Or? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, good luck. All right. You said yeah. Labor Day, but you, you didn't <laughs> say which year. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Good thank you. Up. Thank you. All right. Um, so we have... Uh, bunch of speakers tonight and uh, our first speaker uh, today tonight will be uh, Charlie Holt, Holt and Laura Zerwinsk. Zerwinsk? I don't know, are you speaking together or? Okay. Somebody looks familiar. Um, <laughs> Please state your name and address, and um, you'll have six minutes. My name is Charlie Holt. Um, my address is 19725 Playwrights Way in Cornelius, North Carolina. I know that's probably a little bit of a shock, but I <laughs> will be moving back to Huntersville. So we are neighbors, <laughs> so that's a good thing. And this is Miss Laura Sawinski. Laura Sawinski, 13215 Serenity Street. And this is Merrick Sawinski, same address. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, we wanted to come out and number one, again, my name is Charlie Holt with Lee Brown and Associates and One Community Real Estate out in Concord, North Carolina. We couldn't be more ecstatic to be on board with Inflatable Joy. And the real neat thing that we certainly love about this is that, you know, we channeled our little inner, inner child. We are all very much into serving the community and bringing joy to those in the community, especially when we get to follow hey, Merrick's idea. And it's been such a big turnout for us that we couldn't wait to be a part of it. And I know we had a deadline, but I believe it's extended now yep. into the 19th. And we here at One Community Real Estate would like to extend and ask our neighbors, all of you here, to please consider um, donating to get inflatable because the numbers are so great and I cannot wait till Ms. Zerinsky shares that information with you. The numbers have been so great. Merrick's idea has pretty much blown up and no pun intended. It's <laughs> <That's laughs> <really, laughs> a true story. But uh, it's been such a wonderful turnout and we just cannot wait to be a part of that where we would definitely make ourselves available to pick those up if anybody would like to participate and we certainly hope you do because the numbers are great, and it'd be amazing to for these children to wake up 
and see these inflatables uh, up and down in, in their room. So we can't wait to share those numbers with you. Yeah, and before I, I share those, I just also want to thank everybody for all the hard work for that wonderful Veterans Day parade. Our family was there. My father's a veteran and a Huntersville resident. He was there. And it was very cool to see his very good friend, Bob Gorman, the, <laughs> um, the, the grand poobah of the, of the whole event. Um, so anyway, I just want to throw that out there. Um, Inflated Joy has been a really terrific experience for us and our family, especially for Merrick. Since we met with you late this summer, we've taken a lot of donations. Um, Merrick has been featured on Spectrum News, um, and a, our local Lake Norman publication did an article. And just this morning, we, a special was aired on ABC News affiliate WSOC-TV. That just came out this morning. Um, he did an interview last week at, at a Lowe's store up in Huntersville who don't made a donation to us. And um, we feel like the whole community has really participated. When you even look at our YouTube video that we had created, the song was written by a Huntersville resident, a Aiden O'Leary, who is Merrick's uh, music teacher. A um, friend of mine from high school created the images um, that you see on our, all of our uh, pieces of um, flyers and things like that that we did. But just to share some of the exciting news, so far we have, coll we have collected 53 holiday inflatables uh, for the children to have and enjoy in their rooms at Levine Children's Hospital. And I'm even going to go so far to say that there's possibly some older kids and maybe adults that might have a few in their room. We have over 20 sets of lights. We have, um, we got Legos. We got uh, Merrick donated a wireless set of headphones that he had. Um, we got things for children, uh, I mean infants, uh, teething balls, crib mirrors, things like that, that all of these people that are cooped up in the hospital need. <laughs> okay, I did. Um, we have Uno cards, um, things for older kids, and most, one of the special things to me is we did get some magic wands. Children in the hospital need hope, and um, we're going to bring joy, but sometimes some of them having those magic wands to kind of help have wishes and hopes for when they leave the hospital is pretty important, so we were happy to receive those. There's art kits to inspire creativity and more, but the inflatables is what we're all about. We are thankful to all of you here tonight. I, I know a lot of the faces here uh, supported us and um, we're very grateful for that. Also, Metro Graphics, who's one of our neighbors, um, donated a yard sign that's been in our front yard for the last two months, which our HOA approved <laughs> to be out there. Uh, I, I made sure I took care of that. But, um, but we're very excited to be standing here before you again <coughs> to share those successes. And yes, we are extending the deadline, probably till about Thanksgiving, actually, because after the ABC News piece aired this morning, we, we got a lot of excitement generating. And, According to my calculations, I think another 20 or so inflatables are headed our way. Um, so it's very exciting. Do you have anything to add? No. No. All right. All right. Thank well, you for your time this evening. Thank you. And as I uh, said, one of the okay. best things about being mayor is how much good is being done in our community. So thank, thank you. you I am going to leave some flyers at the table um, for anyone to take that gives you more information about donating. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, friend. Our next speaker tonight will be Miss Betty Jean. Caldwell. Good Monday evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Betty B.J. Caldwell, address 14521 New Haven Drive. Well, this was my blessed night because they came up with wishes and hopes, and I'm very glad about that because the people that I'm representing we have wishes and hopes too, and that's for the little Rosenwald School that's on Dalewood Drive, and most of you know it as the Dalewood Center. And we had a lot of conversations about it, but the discussion has never been made about why the sale. The gentleman just alluded to it, but if there was such a need for space, storage space, maybe the space would not have been sold and the little early childhood program moved to the Rosenwald School. <clears throat> I'm here with testimony, uh, my last testimonial from a student who attended the school. You may have ha received last week some information 
with photographs to show where I entered first grade. And this was from a friend of mine. She's now a minister, 19-year minister in Charlotte, North Carolina, minister at Life Changing Church. <clears throat> Memories of Huntersville Rosenwald School number two. I recently was asked to write a testimonial of what the first school I entered meant and means to me. I have always had fond memories of the school and must admit I had not gone into depth as to what the school really and truly did for me as my, in my adult life until now. <clears throat> the little school, as we affectionately called it, as a child was, child was my place of escape, my fun place, my learning place, my happy place, if you will, because we lived in a segregated society and there was no place to go other than to the school or to the church. It was there that my gifts were cultivated 70 years ago. Our teachers were genuinely interested in our well-being, physically and emotionally. Our gifts and talents were scooped out and utilized first as a singer, orator, and teacher's helper. I was placed in a leadership role in which in turn prepared me for the many leadership positions I have had in the past. In fact, I count it a joy to be able to say that I currently serve as pastor and overseer of Life Changing Church, Charlotte, North Carolina, and it has been my privilege to serve 19 years. Our spirituality was cultivated in reciting mandatory Bible verses and displayed love for our country by proudly saluting, putting our hand over our hearts and re reciting the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag every day. I messed that up, but anyway. As far as race issues, there was no way to offend anyone since we were segregated at a time in a Jim Crow South. We were not exposed to other races, cultures within our public school systems. We were exposed to white communities with negative overtones and constant reminders that we were not equal. Thank you very much, and I heard the bell. I appreciate your receiving my information. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, our next speaker is Miss Crystal Silvas, and I believe she has uh, two other people, Tanya McDonald and Tim McDonald are here, and you're deferring your time? Yes, sir. Okay. Good. Thank you, Miss Silvas. Uh, please state your name and address. You have nine minutes. Crystal Silvis, I live at 13925 Beatty's Ford Road here in Huntersville. Um, my husband and I own a little tiny chicken farm on Beatty's Ford. And um, there have been some developments right across the street. And I've prepared a presentation for you. It should be in front of all of you. Last week I started a petition. We have now over 200 signatures. 175 of those are directly affected by this situation. I understand that our town ordinance allows for outdoor neighborhood parks to be built without a special use or, um, permit. The issue with that is that this is not just a park, this is a stadium that has a very, very loud system and has lights that are completely outside of our town ordinance. Now, no special use permits were given. If you look at page two, you can see what our neighbors in Arrington are dealing with. Um, you'll see a picture of the lights directly across the street. These photos were taken one minute apart and you can see the vast difference between Richard Berry and CSD, Athletic Complex. You can see the degree to which that is lighting our neighbor's yards. I got on Polaris and got you the exact footage of where these pictures are taken. Now, I do not know a lot about uh, foot candles, but I have a little bit of a guide for you right here. Um, 50 foot candles is where you're gonna be able to read. Legally, they are allowed to have 0.1 foot candles 10 feet into the closest adjacent property. Clearly, they are well, well, well past that. 
This is not something that is happening on Friday nights. This is not just a football only thing. This is every soccer practice, every lacrosse practice. This is usually five nights a week that our neighbor's yards are lit up like it's Christmas on the Griswolds. Now, the noise. I have reached out to Huntersville PD. I have reached out to Anthony and he has been advising the Huntersville Police Department. I apologize about this, but the last time Officer Reynolds was told to F off and that it is a $50 citation, so they don't care. I have two recordings, very short, that I want to play for you. The first one is from my front porch. Well, we typically don't allow uh, recordings or presentations, so let's just assume. They were emailed to you, so you can listen to them there. You can clearly hear the names of these students when they are called every time they get a touchdown, anything in my bedroom with all windows and doors closed. Clearly, that is outside of our town ordinance. The next page, road frontage. I understand that this is a Davidson school that came in. It is a charter school. Essentially, every child from Huntersville that is going to this school is taking dollars away from CMS, from our actual schools. I understand that they are doing a great job as far as building tennis courts for us, but they are touting that they built this completely by themselves and not accounting for the over $300,000 that our town gave to them. The road frontage in Davidson is pristine. The road frontage on Beatty's Ford has had a silt fence up for two years. There is nowhere to walk our children to school. There is nowhere to safely walk them to Richard Berry Park. We have contacted them multiple times and they are unwilling to discuss it. Jay Martin told me, the athletic director for the school, get off his property, at which point I bought a ticket to their game. We are requesting that sidewalks be built immediately. I understand that we have a reimbursement contract with them. However, they are already using their field house primarily as a school. They opened what is called a Ripple program. There are students in those classrooms every single week with plans to do two to three times a week as soon as is possible. That is clearly within the guidelines of our reimbursement agreement which states as soon as they have a building whose primary use is a school with classrooms that they are to build those sidewalks. I have action items for you and it is basically a summary of all of this. I would really like to point out that a project like this absolutely deserves a special use permit and public hearings. This has greatly affected our home values because, I mean, anyone would agree if you're buying a farmhouse, there is a very large difference between the price you're going to pay for a farmhouse across the street from a farm with thousands of trees and what you're going to pay for a farmhouse across the street with a noise and light nuisance regularly, correct? Right? Do you have any other comments? Are my nine minutes up? No, but this is not a give and take. This is your comment, so we're listening. I just didn't know if, if maybe you would agree. Um, I have notes from the community members. I only highlighted some main ones. Um, obviously, there are not appropriate barriers for noise and light pollution in your homes. CSD knew what needed to be done, but they are not holding up their end of the deal. Plus, I really don't enjoy having to listen to every event that takes place in my backyard. You guys can definitely read those. This was brought up a month ago, and nothing has been done outside of one board member coming and actually taking audio and seeing what we are experiencing. 
I am still extremely confused as to how this happened. It's been, for me, about a two and a half year fight when I came home to find a silt fence and equipment in my yard after the town of Huntersville and the NCDOT signed off on a quarter acre of my land being stolen. It took me six months to get that reversed and another year and a half to get compensated. We need to do better. The people who are in charge, our project managers, have to be looking at these projects before they say, okay, I'm gonna permit these lights because they're not in the ordinance. Before they say, we're gonna permit this sound system because they are not within the ordinance. That is all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your diligence. Too. All right. Our next speaker is Mr. Ed Cecil. And my understanding is uh, Kimberly Burton is here, as well as uh, Mr. Rob Kidwell. And you're giving your time to Mr. Cecil? Oh, or is this just an order that you want to do this in? Is that what we're doing? I think. Okay. Well, I thank the board members that are here for the Board of Adjustments. Excuse me for one second. Edward Cecil. No, 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 I just want to get it straight here. What? Okay. Mr. Cecil, you have nine minutes. Thank you. Please state your name and Edward address. Edward Cecil, off McCord Road. I thank my uh, board members for being here and succeeding time to me if I need it. I am chair of the Board of Adjustment and I am here representing the Board of Adjustment. The members of the Board of Adjustment are objecting to consent agenda 9D or any attempt to transfer it to the regular agenda. The attempt by the town attorney and whoever else to improperly repeal the right and authority from the Board of Adjustment to adopt and amend its own rules, which were granted by, to the Board of Adjustment and which was, has been held for decades. You were sent an email on November the 4th pointing out the objections in detail to it that neither the town attorney nor the town board can with a swipe of a red pen and wave of a hand with no proper public process by way of the improper surreptitious method of inserting into the consent agenda. The Board of Adjustment hereby requests that the said objection letter to the town and, and commissioners and the public comment request by me to be placed in the public record, and I will give it to the clerk. In our review of the facts, we are of the belief that the town attorney or whomever else might have incorrectly interpreted section 160D-308 of the North Carolina General Statutes in believing that the town can unilaterally take away, take away and over the rules of procedure from the Board of Adjustment. That section does not have to do with a Board of Adjustment that was established decades ago and given the right and the authority to adopt and amend its own rules of procedure. It is only as to new established boards. If there is an attempt to take away that right and authority, which the Board of Adjustment objects to, then only by way of public process, public hearing, discussion with total transparency, and not by way of a consent agenda item, or by transferring to it to the agenda that eliminates all of that. As I recall, the mayor-elect specifically stated she, that she wants citizens of Huntersville to participate and be involved. Another concern we have is that it was mentioned by a commissioner that there appears to have been star chamber discussions to dissolve the Board of Adjustment entirely or transfer it to an, an advisory board that the town controls. Not only would that remove the independence of the Board of Adjustment as mandated by the state of North Carolina, but it might also be a pretext in an attempt to get rid of it. That is why I'm wearing a black suit in fear of the death and burial of the Board of Adjustment. The present standing members of the Board of Adjustment are probably some of the best qualified people that have ever been on it. The Board is diverse. There are owners of businesses, vice presidents of regional corporations, chief financial officers, teachers, 
a former chair of the 2040 Plan Steering Committee, prominent architect, and three attorneys with over 120 years of experience. With anal analytical experience, vast trial and appellant work experience, they have represented hundreds and actually up to thousands of major clients and corporations. All have taught law, have assisted in writing legislation for a governor of a state, one having been a judge pro tem and a member licensed to practice in the Ninth, Sixth, Fourth United States Circuit Court of Appeals, as well as being a member and entitled to practice before the United States Supreme Court. We have been informed and believe that you may be removing it from the consent agenda and wrongly placing it on the agenda. We are strongly requesting that you not only remove item 9D from the consent agenda, but that you do not place it on the agenda. To do so and any attempt to pass it would be illegal and void on its face. To pass this without a public hearing is unethical. It is also potentially illegal as it violates the spirit of a transparent government and the constitutional rights of due process and equal protection of the law. If the town wants to go down this road, the better approach would be to hold public hearings and solicit the in input of the entire town. There's a larger concern for if these changes can be made by the town as to the Board of Adjustment without transparency, what other changes are being made behind closed doors in the town with any transparency? Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. John Passarelli. Good evening. Well, good evening. Please Thank you very your name much. And address. You have three minutes. Mr. Mayor and Councilman, I'm just here to augment what uh, Mr. Cecil has said. Uh, I've practiced, oh, by the way, if uh, required, I live in. Uh, Crown Ridge. Um, I'm just here to augment what he said. I've practiced law for over 50 years. I've been, in, I've had cases before foreign governments. I've had, I've been a prosecutor for both the state and federal government. I think I know what I'm talking about. And I took a look at the uh, law of this state and your ordinances with regard to the matter of the, uh, the rules of the uh, Board of Adjustment. According to the law of the state of uh, North Carolina, if the town board does not adopt rules of procedure, and the statute uses the word may, not shall adopt, may adopt rules, then the board of adjustment is entitled to adopt its own rules. The wisdom of your predecessors established within your own ordinances a specific provision that indicates that if the Board of Adjustment is to hear any appeal or petition that comes before it, that it must do so under its own rules, not the rules of the town. Consequently, if I were an attorney representing a client before the Board of Adjustment, I would allow the hearing to go ahead and immediately sue the city and the Board of Adjustment for violation of procedural due process. I've done this in the past in the state of Illinois and won. The situation is that any decision made by the Board of Adjustment based on rules passed by this town or the town board would be null and void and they would be a denial of due process. The Board of Adjustment is the only one under your own law that is allowed to adopt rules of procedure. And if you do it, then immediately you're going to essentially negate the ability of the Board of Adjustment to have any hearings whatsoever because they would not be done under its own rules as required by your law. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kidwell, are you wanting to speak? Please state your name and address. You have three minutes. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, board members, Rob Kidwell, 7219 Hand and Lane, Huntersville. Uh, you've heard a lot of points I was going to make, so I'll be brief. Under the same general statute, uh, 160D-308, <coughs> that you're reviewing tonight under the consent agenda, which still don't know why it's under the consent agenda. When you get your preview packets, 
one of you should have said, hey, let's move this up. One of the six, there's only four here tonight, which is another reason this needs to be punted down the road until six board members can make it an informed decision. But to carry on, it says, in the absence of action by the governing board, each board created under this article is authorized to adopt its own rules of procedure that are consistent with the provisions of this chapter. Since its inception, nearly 30 years ago, the governing board has not been involved with adopting the rules of the Board of Adjustments. They've been on their own entity. The governing board has been an absent parent for a child that has grown and created its own rules. And it needs to stay that way. They're grown, they're doing well, they're doing what we've asked, let them continue to do that. Furthermore, the statute is not clear on whether a governing board can override existing rules of procedure, only provide ones for a new board. If this was a new board, if we were creating a new board of adjustments for the town of Huntersville, we absolutely would have that power. But it does not state that in the statute. It does not state that if you have an existing one, you can override it. So it's very ambiguous. I would ask the board, with only four members present, as I said earlier, to bring this up, postpone it, until six board members can hear this, and also allow the public and the board of adjustments to weigh in on this. I think there needs to be a lot more communication before this is passed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our final speaker tonight is Mr. Kevin Bray. Good evening. Please state your name and address. You have three, shoot in three minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Kevin Bray, 9708 St. Bart's Lane in Huntersville. Uh, I'm also here to speak uh, in support of the remarks by Mr. Ed Cecil, uh, Mr. Passarelli, and also Mr. Kidwell. And I think uh, the one point that I would like to make about this is, I think for you know the operation of the township and respect for the citizens of the township, I think it's essential that the Board of Adjustment have a position that's absolutely independent of the town board. Um, I think that's uh, an important uh, role that the Board of Adjustment can play and that any perception of interference by the town not be permitted. Even the, uh, the impression of impropriety, I think, dilutes the power and the impact that the Board of Adjustment has on the community and the community's expectations of the board as well. And so for that reason, uh, I think that the Board of Adjustment should have the power to make its own rules without interference from the town. Um, and I think the only criterion we should be held to really is that anything we do is in compliance with the laws of the state of North Carolina. Um, that's my comment, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. All right, well, we have no other speakers signed up. Um, any agenda changes? Yes, Mr. Mayor. We do have one agenda change. We'd like to move item 9D off the consent agenda to uh, 8I under other business. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that. All right, any other uh, changes? Can I have a motion? Motion to adopt the agenda as amended. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Seeing none opposed, we move forward. All right, um, our first public hearing tonight is uh, 7A, conduct a public hearing on a request to abandon and close a portion of Patterson Road. This is Mastro Francesco. Hello, Mayor, Commissioners, Mr. Roberts. Um, I want to start just with like a refresher on this part. Um, on October 4th, 2021, the board adopted the intent to abandon a portion of Patterson Road. Since then, um, the town has followed the North Carolina General Statute 160A-299, which is titled Procedure for Permanently Closing Streets or Alleys. So tonight I'm here for the public hearing to abandon and close a section of Patterson Road. I guess, all right. So we'll start on the left-hand side of the screen is the vicinity map. The parcel that I'm talking about is just west of 77. It's at the intersection of Cambright and Patterson at the northeast corner. So if you look at the image on the right, the red line is the approximate length of the, par uh, the road that I'm asking to be abandoned, that was petitioned to be abandoned. This slide 
shows the existing road network today. The town completed a project in 2019 to realign Patterson Road at the intersection of Hambright and also upgrade the intersection. So this is a great picture to show you the portion of the road that is no longer in use and has been petitioned to be abandoned. And my last slide is, it's, it's kind of hard to see, but this is from the surveyed area, the surveyed map. So the red portion is actually just under 3,500 square feet to be abandoned. The blue portion just under 2,900 square feet. So the total area to be abandoned for this roadway would be 6,296 square feet. Um, there is a staff report that I'd like to submit. Uh, the staff has no objections to this abandonment and I have not received any comments during this period of time but I am open to answer any questions that anyone has today about this project. Any questions? All right. Thank you. We'll close Thank that you. public hearing and we'll go to other business. Don't go away. Yep. Uh, consider adopting order to abandon and close a portion of Patterson Road. Do I have a motion? Commissioner Walsh? I'd like to make a motion to adopt the order closing a portion of Patterson Road. Second. Commissioner Bloom. Any discussion? All those in favor? I see none. Motion passes. Thank you. I know it was a long, arduous time. Here. <laughs> it's fine. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Item 8B, which is a quasi judicial hearing to conduct an evidentiary hearing and consider a decision on petition SUP 21 03, a request by Art Van Wigerden on behalf of Metro Ina Greenhouses for a special use permit for a dormitory for a bona fide farm to numerous parcels. Uh, my understanding is the applicant would like to continue that to December 6th. Um, do I have a motion to continue? Commissioner Walsh? I'd like to make a motion to continue the evidentiary hearing for petition SUP 21-03 until December 6, 2021 at 6 p.m. to be held at Town Hall. Second. Commissioner Bales? Commissioner Boone? Uh, I got a question on the uh, motion. Uh, will the new board or the old board hear this quasi judicial? It's the uh, old board. Okay, but well, that wasn't in the motion. Do you accept you, that? I do. In there? Thank you. Okay, so the old board will make that decision. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Motion passes. Uh, item 8C, which is a uh, can conduct a quasi-judicial evidentiary hearing and consider a decision on petition SUP 21-04, request by Carla Knox on behalf of Knox Development Resources uh, of parcels uh, 015-17101 and 015-17102 to remove a special use permit to allow a bank facility. <coughs> As a reminder, quasi-judicial hearings are evidentiary in nature. The board must uh, base quasi-judicial decisions upon competent, relevant, and substantial evidence in the record. Competent evidence, <coughs> excuse me, is evidence that is sufficiently trustworthy and reliable, and that is legally fit and acceptable for consideration by the board. Speculative, irrelevant, or vague evidence, non-expert opinions as to something that requires an expert and not accepted hearsay evidence will likely not be competent evidence. Material evidence is evidence that shows that the standards will or will not be met. Evidence is substantial if it is relevant and regarded by a reasonable person as sufficient to support a specific conclusion. Speculation on substantiated fears of the community or vague assertions do not constitute substantial evidence. Quasi Judicial hearings are constrained by the standards in the ordinance and the facts presented. Only parties with standing, including the applicant, local government, and individuals who can show they will suffer special damage, excuse me, damages have the right to participate fully in the hearing. Parties may present evidence, call witnesses, and make legal arguments. Other individuals may speak as a witness. However, they will not be allowed to, fully, to participate fully as a party such as questioning other witnesses or by calling other persons to testify. Witnesses must swear or affirm their testimony. General witness testimony is limited to the facts, not personal preferences or opinions. 
Certain topics require expert witnesses, including projections about impacts on property values and traffic impacts. Individuals providing expert opinion testimony must be qualified as experts and provide the factual evidence upon which they base their expert opinion. Mere conclusory uh, testimony lacking the foundation of the expert's opinion is insufficient to establish the existence or non-existence of a fact or conclusion. Even though the board may rely on other evidence, if it is not objected to, the board should rely on competent, reliable evidence in making its decisions. So, who's here for the town and who's here for the applicant? My name's Nathan Farber. I'll be representing the town. Okay. And nobody's here for the applicant? Okay. Well, good to meet you. And nice <laughs> to meet you, too. Um, and we're going to swear you in first. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Um, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you shall give to the board in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, go ahead. Okay. All right. So I am here um, presenting the. Oh, wait. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I should have this down by now. Um, the parties in this case have rights for any ex parte communication to be disclosed. Ex parte communication is any communication about the case outside of the hearing. That may include an email as well as conversations with party staff or the general public. Does any board member have any ex parte communications to disclose? Seeing none, now you may proceed. Okay, first I would like to um, present my staff report into for the record. Um, and back in August of 2018, um, the town board approved an SUP to allow a banquet facility um, off of Hambright and Beatty's Ford Road. Um, the property owner has decided they no longer want to develop um, the Saddle Creek Banquet Facility. Um, and the property owner is now requesting to remove the 2018 special use permit. Um, removing the 2018 special use permit would allow the property to be developed in accordance with the underlying zoning district requirements. In this case, they would have to follow the uh, rural zoning district. Um, and here's just a aerial overview of the property. Um, and that includes the small little triangular property at the corner. And the planning board uh, decision. And if you guys have any questions, um, I can answer them. Any questions for Mr. Park? Okay. Yes, Commissioner Bales. Just a quick question. If we remove the special use permit, that does go back to rule. Correct. correct? Yes. Thank you. Right. Any other questions? All right, as a reminder, the board is tasked with deciding if, based on the evidence presented at the hearing uh, before this board, the proposal meets the applicable standards. If the applicant meets the burden of producing competent material and substantial evidence that the standards and the ordinance will be met, the burden shifts to the other parties opposing the application to show by competent material and substantial evidence that the standards and the ordinance will not be met. If conflicting evidence <coughs> as to the standard is presented, the board will weigh the evidence and determine which side's evidence is correct. As an example, the board may de determine that one side's evidence is more credible or more reliable. If the applicant does not meet their burden of producing competent material and substantial evidence, that standards in the ordinance will be met. The board must deny the application. The application, as originally submitted, was considered by the planning board, and the planning board made a recommendation. Nothing that occurred at the planning board level, including the planning board's recommendation, is considered evidence that you <coughs> can base your decision on. However, the planning board's recommendation may be useful uh, to the board in identifying issues that this board may want to consider and evaluate based upon the evidence that was presented uh, in the hearing. So any questions, any motions? Commissioner Walsh? I'll do a motion. Okay. In considering the special use permit SUP 21-04 Saddlebrook event venue, we, the town board, find the request meets all required conditions and specification 
is reasonable and does not pose an injurious effect on adjoining properties and find the character of the neighborhood or the health, safety, and general welfare of the community will be minimized. The decision is supported by the following. All legal notification requirements have been met. Removing the 2018 special use permit would allow the property to be developed in accordance with the underlying zoning rural requirements. Any future use must comply with all lot, size, yard, and other standards which zoning ordinance applies to all uses permitted under the rural zoning district. Is there a second? I'll second that. Commissioner Boone. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Seeing none opposed, the motion passes. Uh, staff will draft and I will sign a final written decision to reflect the vote and reasoning uh, for this decision. The written decision will be provided to the applicant and the other parties uh, with the right to such notice. Uh, thank you, everyone. That was a good one. That was easy. <laughs> you know how much I enjoy these. <laughs> Can't wait to do another one. <clears throat> All right. Go to item 8D, which is considered a decision on petition TA21-08, a request by the Town of Huntersville Planning Department to amend Article 8.25.4, swim stream buffers, buffer delineation, Articles 8.17.12A2 and 8.17.12B1, 8 uh, water quality performance criteria, performance criteria for low density projects, performance criteria for high density projects, and Article 12.2.3, definitions, watershed definitions of the Huntersville Zoning Arts. To speak, that was a mouthful. It was, so I don't have to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would like to enter the staff report into the record for text amendment 21-08. Um, you may remember this from a while ago. Um, the swim buffer delineation text amendment is proposed to clarify which and how buffers must be shown on land development plans for review and approval by the town. This is submitted by the Town of Huntersville Planning Department. Uh, currently, if someone is submitting, someone being a developer, a land development plan, Article 8.25.9A requires that buffer boundaries, including all buffer zones, be clearly delineated on all site-specific plans for approval um, on construction plans, grading and clearing plans, erosion and sediment control plans, and site plans. The proposed ordinance would clarify that that delineation be by a certified professional using U.S. Army Corps of Engineer and or North Carolina Division of Water Quality methodology, um, and that for projects that do not require a land development permit, such as an individual property owner who wants to put a deck in their backyard and they have to happen to have swim buffer, they would not have to have um, the delineation by a certified professional. Um, this proposed text amendment has been um, sent through the county stormwater administrator who has, um, I won't say approved, but um, supported the language of the text amendment. Um, the Planning Board has also um, made a motion to approve the text amendment as well, um, and I'll take any questions that you may have at this time. Any questions or motions? Yes, Mr. Walsh, you're busy today. Apparently. <laughs> In considering the proposed amendment, TA 21-08, the amendment article, to amend article 8.25.4, swim buffer, stream buffer, Buffer delineation, articles 8.17.12a, 2, and 8.17.12b, 1. Water quality performance criteria, performance criteria for low density projects, performance criteria for high density projects, and article 12.2.3 definitions, watershed definitions of the Huntersville zoning ordinance to clarify which and how buffers must be shown on land development plans submitted for review and approval by the Town of Huntersville. The Town Board approves based on the amendment being consistent with policies EOS 1 and EOS 5 of the Huntersville 2040 Community Plan. It is reasonable in the public interest to amend the zoning ordinance because it clarifies which and how buffers must be shown on land development plans submitted for review 
and approval by the town of Huntersville and helps to prevent unintended disturbances of swim buffers throughout the town of Huntersville. Second. Commissioner Bales. Any discussion? All those in favor? Seeing none opposed, that motion passes. Uh, goes to item 8E, and my understanding is uh, the, there's going to be a continuation of this till December 6th. And can we do that all in one motion, or all three have to be done at the same time? I believe. I mean, uh, or separate. Commissioner Boone is going to do three separate motions for items 8E, F, and G, correct? Okay, sorry. That's okay. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to. Uh, continue item 8E to our meeting on December 6th uh, with the current board. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, that'll be continued. Item 8F. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion to continue item 8F uh, to our meeting on December 6th to continue this with the current board. Second. Phillips. Any discussion? All those in favor? Move that on. Item 8G. 8G. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would like to uh, make a motion that we continue this to our December 6th meeting uh, with the current board. Second. Commissioner Phillips. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, our next item is 8H, consider appointments to the planning board to fill vacancies. There are two uh, appointments, one due to somebody move and another to the uh, party uh, being elected to the town board. Um, Commissioner Walsh, you have two? I do, uh, Jody Wright and Trina Loomis. Jody Wright and Trina Luna Loomis. Commissioner Boone. Uh, Steve Jennenbacher and Scott Harrington. Commissioner Bales. Jody Wright and Trina Loomis. Okay. Well, uh, there seems to be a consensus for Ms. Wright and Ms. Loomis. So if we have, uh, they're nominated, we have a motion to appoint those two motion to appoint Jody Wright and Trima Lewis to the planning board second any discussion all those in favor all those opposed the motion passes so one. okay next item is 8i which is adopt rules of procedure for the Huntersville board of adjustment pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 160D-308. Ms. Sloop, Good a lot evening. of discussion on this today. There has been. Yes. <coughs> so, as you all may recall, we had previously adopted, um, that is to say that the Board of Adjustment previously adopted edits to their rules of procedure. Recently, the Chair submitted additional proposed edits, and those edits have been encompassed in the proposed edits for tonight's agenda with the addition of a few other grammatical edits. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have about them. Any questions of Ms. Sloop this time? Commissioner Walsh? I've got a number of them. Uh, Ms. Sloop, is the town required, town of Huntersville required to have a board of adjustment? No. The North Carolina general statutes do mandate that certain types of decisions be made using quasi-judicial procedures. However, the statutes allow that those decisions can be made by the town board, planning board, or board of adjustment. In fact, there are several jurisdictions in North Carolina that do not have separate boards of adjustment. Okay, so those other, uh, the planning board or the town board, could perform those functions if necessary. That's correct. Um, North Carolina General Statutes 160D-302 specifically makes the appointment of a board of adjustment optional. Gotcha. Is it within the authority of the town board to extend, limit, terminate, or in other ways change those who serve on the boards, commissions, and committees that the town is responsible for? 
Yes, uh, the statutes allow the town to establish and appoint members to the various boards, including the planning board, board of adjustment, and other advisory boards. Um, the town board may also remove members appointed to its various boards as established by both common law and also by case law. In fact, the North Carolina uh, UNC school government has several publications on that topic. Aside from its statutory authority to appoint and remove members, the town board, town board also adopted a resolution in 2018 that specifically set term limits, service limits, et cetera, and directed town staff to carry out those changes in the various boards, rules or procedures, bylaws, et cetera, as well as make any necessary updates to the town ordinances to align with what was set forth in the resolution. Okay. So just to be clear, the town board may extend limit term and in other ways change those who serve on these various boards, including the Board of Adjustment. That's correct, and the specific uh, statute reference for Board of Adjustment is 160D302. Uh, you do have to appoint them within the confines of that statute, meaning that if you choose to establish a Board of Adjustment, you have to have at least five members and there has to be three-year term limits. However, again, as I mentioned, the town previously passed a resolution that set limitations on the ability to serve um, as far as the number of terms. Uh, you do definitely have the authority to change, as I mentioned, remove, add to, appoint. That's specific in the statutes. So in the last um, year or so, have we changed any rules or bylaws for any other boards, commissions, or committees? Public art, Greenway Trails, Parks and Rec, et cetera. We have almost every single board or committee has undergone revisions. In February 2021, we we edited the town board code of ethics and also established ones for the other town boards. We edited the town board rules of procedure in April 2021. The Parks and Rec Commission, Public Art Commission, Greenway Trails, and Bike Commission were also updated in May 2021. And <clears throat> excuse me, in August 2021, we established bylaws for the 150th Anniversary Committee. The HOAB bylaws were updated in September 2021. The planning board also had edits proposed to their uh, rules of procedure, which they approved in September 2021. And I would note that the statutes do not require a public hearing to amend any of these rules. Uh, and in fact, none of them had a public hearing as it's not legally required. So over the last year, two years, we've been making these adjustments. What was the reason behind that? Well, as mentioned, um, the town board did pass a resolution in 2018, which specifically directed town staff to update uh, the bylaws, rules of procedure, et cetera, for the various boards to align them with what was set forth in the resolution with regards to term limits, service limits, et cetera. Uh, we also needed to go through and make any necessary changes to account for legislative changes, specifically 160D109 with regards to conflict of interest rules, and also some of them, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, as is the instant case here, uh, they were requested specifically by that board. Okay. Um, and in any case, when we changed for those various groups, did we ever put it on the consent agenda? Yes, we did. Some were on the consent agenda, some were not on the consent agenda, some were moved from the consent agenda. Okay. Is the Board of Adjustment an independent entity from the town of Huntersville? The Board of Adjustment serves as an arm of the town in that it is a decision-making body for the town with duties assigned to it by the town. Town planning staff are responsible for providing staff reports to the Board of Adjustment on individual applications coming before it, such as requests for variances. Town legal staff are responsible for ensuring that the Board of Adjustment follows all statutorily mandated procedural processes and requirements in carrying out its assigned duties. However, that being said, the Board of Adjustment independently decides when to approve or disapprove applications and appeals coming before it without influence from the town board or town staff. Okay, so an example of the Board of Adjustment making a variance request, does the town board have any authority to overrule it? No, it does not. The board, again, makes its own decision to approve or disapprove variances independently from the town board. Um, they do have to apply the four statutorily mandated variance require, requirements that are set forth in 160D705D. Okay, so the 
Board of Adjustment is not an independent entity from the town, but their rulings are. That's correct. And who can override a Board of Adjustment decision? Quasi-judicial decisions made by the Board of Adjustment can be appealed to Mecklenburg County Superior Court pursuant to 160D 1405. Okay. Is there any provision in state law that gives the Board of Adjustment the authority to independently write their rules of procedure without any oversight from the town board? 160D 308 specifically provides the town board with authority to adopt rules of procedure for not only the Board of Adjustment, but all boards that it creates pursuant to Article 3, Chapter 160D. In the absence of action by the town board, the Board of Adjustment could adopt its own rules as long as they're consistent with Chapter 160D and other applicable laws. The adoption is typically done and coordinated in jurisdiction with the legal department in coordination with that jurisdiction's legal department. However, once the town board takes action, that forecloses the ability for them to adopt their own rules. Okay, so then in your legal opinion, does the town board have the right to approve the rules included in our, for the Board of Adjustment, included in our agenda packet this evening? Yes, uh, pursuant to 160D 308 and as confirmed by the subject matter experts at the UNC School of Government. I don't have any further questions. I should have had you doing the quasi-judicial. <laughs> 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 All right, any other questions? I think those were uh, Commissioner Brown. Ms. Soup, I would like to know if you could uh, reread your opening comment about where the suggestions came from. Those were specifically, well, with the addition of a few grammar changes, they came from <coughs> the chairman of the Board of Adjustment. Okay, my sec second question is to the town manager. Uh, Mr. Roberts, is there any uh, local towns that has the Board of Adjustments and the Planning Board <coughs> in one ad or one roof? I can actually answer that. We did some research to see, and many jurisdictions have their Planning Board set as both the Planning Board and the Board of Adjustment, including Cornelius, Graham, Ashboro, Pinehurst, Tryon, Davie County, Caldwell, etc. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? We have a motion to adopt the rules as uh, presented. Commissioner Wall. I would like to make a motion to adopt the rules of procedure for the Huntersville Board of Adjustment pursuant to NCGS 160D-308. Is there a second? I'll second that. Commissioner Boone. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Seeing none opposed, that motion passes. I do want to say thank you for the input and for the passion uh, from the Board of Adjustments. Uh, and I want to thank staff for um, uh, helping along with this. And um, do I have a, a motion for the consent agenda? Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Seeing none opposed. Uh, any closing comments? Well, I, this is my last uh, time to uh, sign off, and I want to thank everybody for uh, six great years, and uh, wish everybody luck uh, for the new board, and uh, new pre mayor pro tem, and new uh, mayor-elect, and uh, new commissioners, and thank everyone else for serving uh, over the last uh, two years. Um, I think Huntersville's a great place, one of the best places to live. It's moving in the right direction, and I feel confident that the new board, uh, along with the new mayor, will uh, keep the, everything moving in the right direction, and uh, I'm not moving, so I'm looking forward to uh, the progress that continues to be made here. So with that, oh. Don't forget, happy Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, happy <laughs> Thanksgiving. We'll see you at Town Hall on December 6th. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All those in favor? All right. We're adjourned. Thank you all. Hmm?